Okay. Welcome again. Um, yeah, we had uh, so we took took some time to um, go through to understand uh, different parts of uh, how God has made us. Uh, um, the mind, the soul, sorry, the soul, the body, and the spirit, and our focus being uh, on the soul um, uh, to, to understand that uh, uh, the emotional part of us, the emotional person or soul, um, is what uh, can also be, can also be uh, sick or can also be can have problems and that's what we are specifically looking into as to how do we come to a place of wholeness in this area of our souls so we we briefly looked at some uh, some terms also and uh, the last thing that we just want to focus again is just to have a understanding of the difference between the brain and the soul um, so the brain is a structural organ it's a functional organ and it is a physical organ um, and that the brain is what rules and controls the entire body system um, and the the uh, the brain has areas in it for thinking for reasoning for emoting so that's why we were talking about how the connection between the soul and the physical body is very complex. It's through even the physical body that one can reason and one can think and emote because there are uh, centers in the brain that help in thinking and reasoning and emotions. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so there, there are those centers that are there. However, the soul is what um, makes up, like we said, the mind, the will, and the emotions, and becomes a very real part of us, but gets manifested in the way that it expresses itself through the brain. Okay? Uh, we, we, unlike being able to see the brain under a, you know, an MRI or a, or a scan, the soul is something that you cannot see you cannot um it's not something that you can scan and see and that's why it it's described as the the person with the inner person or the psychological person the only uh, the way that you are able to have a good cross-section of the soul is through the way um uh, through through expressions of speech through expressions of attitude, through emotions that come up, is how you get to see a lot more about what uh, the, the brain, uh, uh, sorry, the the soul soul is. Okay, so you cannot see the soul. It's something that gets expressed in the way that we talk, in the way that we behave, in the way that we emote. So as we said, the the mind affects the brain and the body and we spoke of something called like i said earlier was psychosomatic issues that often psychosomatic issues often have its root cause in the emotional part or the psychological part of the of the person um, like um, you know you, there, there may probably be times that uh, uh, people who may be psychosomatic have manifestations of their emotional struggles coming across in their bodies either you know and very common ones are uh, headaches common ones are um, uh, joint pains um, uh, issues with with sleep all of this comes as a result of the psychological concerns that may be in the very being of the person okay now in this next part we're going to briefly look at uh, uh, what are some of the problems that are related to the soul um, or what we call is uh, call is can the soul be sick uh, is it possible that the soul can be sick yes the soul uh, can be sick and uh, this sickness is the problems that occurs within the soul of the person 
and that's what you see as uh, emotional struggles or that's what you see as psychological struggles so when we look at these problems uh, there may be very many examples to this um, and just to name a few, and I think some that have been named even in your book um, are things like uh, anger, uncontrolled anger, uh, deep resentment, uh, hatred, extreme forms of sadness, um, uh, fears that can be very, very obsessive or controlling or something that holds on to the person extreme sense of uh, anxiety, panic, uh, worry, or there can be uh, emotional problems could come as a result of the, a lack of self-esteem, uh, lack of self-worth, uh, very significant, uh, um, deep-rooted rejection that can come about, uh, feelings of insignificance, a sense of uh, insecurity, a sense of being uh, a mistake, being a failure. Some emotional problems come as a... Excuse me. Uh, some problems come as a result of, um, you know, there are tendencies of uh, self-harm, suicidal tendencies that can be addictions of, uh, of many kinds. Um, there, there are often disturbances in the way one thinks, um, uh, which could, um, you know, which could be, be more into obsessive kind of thoughts. Or uh, there can be, as, as a result of the emotional concerns that they can come, there are uh, problems which are manifested physically as in the sense of eating disorders, uh, uh, concerns with, uh, uh, with, with lifestyle and health. So when we look at it, yes, the soul can, can, can be sick, sick and you have a wide range of um, uh, problems that you would see through this, okay? Uh, the the next part of it, um, you know, quickly just looks at um, what are some of the life's problems that are related to the problems of the soul, um, and and I want to make a couple of mentions over here, and uh, also uh, you know just open up um, concerns with mental health conditions as well, that becomes that that borders out into sometimes into a disorder because of the of the strong uh, issues that have happened uh, in the emotions of the person or in the soul part of the person okay so the uh, the first one that's listed here is that of certain behaviors um, and choices sorry i'm just looking if there's any yeah so behaviors and um choices that come about. So th there are a couple of terms that are used here, which is, um, you know, compulsive, being compulsive, being addictive, being impulsive, being repetitive. And uh, just a couple of examples for this for us to uh, kind of better understand. Um, so that when, when we're looking at the word compulsive, it is a need uh, to do something and until that is done, there seems to be no rest, or no, no, uh, or uh, th there could be a sense of distress if the compulsions aren't followed. So, um, uh, and I'm sure some of us would have heard the terms called as OCD, obsessive compulsive disorders, where there is an obsession in the mind, an obsessive thought in the mind that leads to a compulsive act. Um, so some of the, uh, um, you know, the, the, maybe I'll just give you some examples of compulsions is um, the need to, um, the obsessive thoughts could be one like, uh, you know, the hands aren't clean or there is, there is a, um, uh, 
uh, infection all around and the compulsive behavior uh, becomes uh, excessive hand washing or um, or there is a, there is an obsessive thought about um, about not having locked doors and there is a compulsive behavior of frequent checking or uh, in in an, any any specific area so these these also become uh, issues with the soul because it 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 um, brings about significant distress and until and unless uh, one resorts to a compulsive behavior uh, it, it is they, they don't feel settled uh, in dealing with that kind of a distress okay so that's compulsion when we're looking at addictive um, uh, let's look at certain addictions such as uh, be it alcohol, uh, be it smoking, or be it um, mm, pornography. A lot of these addictions are resorted to because there is no sense, there isn't an adequate sense of coping in the emotional realm. Um, uh, so that it, it, it requires something else or a substance or something tangible to keep itself to cope. Like um, you would have heard of um, people uh, talking about how when they when they are very stressed, once they've had a smoke, they feel a lot more calm, right? And that becomes a coping to deal with stress. Addictions become a coping to deal with stress. Or people who are going through an emotional um, um, uh, period, uh, emotional lack uh, tend to get addicted to um, some form of a, uh, an experience that gives them uh, that that's uh, that that makes them feel power over that situation. Usually, you see this in pornography, that there is an emotional lack that they experience, <clears throat> and they get addicted to pornography, hoping that that fills up the void um, that they are experiencing within their emotions. Okay, so that that becomes that's another part of being addictive. The word impulsive, impulsive is to do make choices without understanding consequences or understanding uh, what what happens so um, some sometimes um, um, you know people with an impulsive nature may do things that are very risky for their lives without really looking at the consequences of it so the impulse comes as a result of the heightened emotion that may be that they may be going through so um there is there is these uh, so I'm, I'm just going to tell you a bit about uh, some of disorders psychiatric disorders uh, or personality disorders that uh, play out here are those who are impulsive in nature that at a point of time and and how does this manifest you know let's say um uh, the, a person gets into an argument with somebody and because of the height, heightened emotion, they aren't able to um, calm themselves down. And the only way to, um, you know, to get what they want or to be able to uh, cope is to impulsively do something. So that's how, uh, you know, you could, um, uh, uh, many, many suicides, I think almost uh, if I'm a right upon the percentage, at least a 10 to 12% of suicides happens as a result of impulsive behavior. It is not a well thought of action, but because of the heightened emotions or the um, struggles they feel within uh, a, a specific situation, not able to face that distress, get impulsive and uh, do something, right? Either, uh, you know, commit, a, attempt a suicide or uh, engage in high risk behavior. Um, so it, it's impulsivity is all about responding to the emotion at hand. When someone is emotional, you respond accordingly. And that in itself causes uh, significant uh, st uh, issues. Okay, The last one is here, repetitive, where things are done uh, over and over again 
because of the lack of uh, 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 lack of settlement in their minds that that something is enough. So con continuous repetitive uh, uh, patterns of behavior actually uh, uh, takes on. So even repetition also moves into, the, like I said, the obsessive compulsive part of it. Okay, so these are some of the behavior and uh, certain behaviors and choices that relate to problems in the soul. Is there any question here? Uh, okay, I think there was a couple of questions. Uh, can alcoholism be treated uh, as a bloodline curse or or where do put this bloodline curses example early deaths madness anger okay um uh, avni we are at page 6 okay so can alcoholism be treated like a bloodline curse now Alcoholism, um, so uh, I, I think I'd like to answer it as two parts, is that, um, uh, is to understand that, um, so when, when you look at psychiatry and psychological science, uh, it, uh, they have classified alcoholism as a disorder. Um, now, what we mean by alcoholism is being dependent on alcohol as a disorder. And if you look at the causes that it talks about, is that there can be very many causes that comes, uh, natural causes, okay? Um, and I believe that there are spiritual causes to alcoholism also. Uh, so the natural causes that generally take place is it can be hereditary, it can be a learned behavior, a behavior of coping that is learned uh, in the early formative years of an individual, where alcohol has been resorted to as a coping mechanism and that becomes like a like a like a mechanism to to help yourself work through that so it can be seen as a learned behavior it can be seen as something that's hereditary or genetic that um, you know family members or there's a family history of alcoholism and you'd probably see that in the generations to come uh, however, I, I still I still would say that there are also spiritual reasons for uh, alcoholism in in the fact that you know like um, like you would see um, how suicides um, if if you look at histories of suicides you will you would see that there is there has um, um, probably occurred suicides within that family even even earlier. So that also, I, I think, is also like uh, a curse that keeps uh, uh, going forward. You know, uh, that's some uh, that there is an influence of, of demonic powers in that area of being uh, of taking away life, of not being able to cope and taking away life. So I'd, I'd see that as. Um, also as some kind of a generational bondage, not a curse, I think it, it's better, uh, the word best used is a generational bondage that, that can occur. So yes, alcoholism can have very many different um, uh, causes. Uh, so whether it's as a coping, whether it's as a learned behavior, uh, as a result of experiences of the home, or whether it be spiritual in nature. Okay. I think, uh, is there any, any other question? If not, we'll move forward. Okay, the next part of um, uh, problems uh, related to the soul is the emotional well-being. Uh, now, this is a large part um, uh, often that, that gets, uh, 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 it, it's not, it, it's not shown out as much or it doesn't come out as much in the open like certain behaviors and certain choices because a lot of behaviors and choices are things you can see it's it's tangibly seen whereas emotional concerns and problems uh, are things that the person suffers through within and uh, some of these that that have been termed here is fear anxiety depression hopelessness, rejection, feeling victimized, and having low self-esteem. And all of this could have very many causes to it. 
Um, so, uh, for example, uh, you know, I have seen people who are anxious have a family member who who has had a condition of anxiety. So that's been the coping of people. And uh, it, it moves on as a coping even in the generations to come. That uh, just being anxious about different things and that can anxiety can um, uh, can be generalized in the sense of there can be uh, there can be a pervasive sense of anxiety on everything there can be anticipatory anxiety that is um, wondering what's going to happen even before some of that uh, that some of those things have happened so anxiety becomes like a crutch and uh, becomes and and it gets very difficult to move forward um, in the different things that the individual is doing. So anxiety, panic, can all be extremely debilitating for the individual. <clears throat> fear, fear, fear is another uh, uh, another important emotional um, uh, issue that that comes about, where. Um, uh, fear arises as a result of um, s some sense, some anticipation of some kind of a harm that, that may come about. So um, the, the feeling of being in fear can again be extremely debilitating. Okay? Depression, the way that one responds to life uh, in a state of sadness, uh, in a state of uh, uh, a, a low mood at all points of time, where they where they show extreme pessimism, extreme hopelessness and helplessness in in different situations, that their response to life becomes um, very very bleak. There's there's no desire for the future. There is um, there is a bleak understanding of what what can come about. So this this is what depression can put people into. Uh, now, now I think I I just want to add a note on this is that um, uh, so so depression can also be clinical uh, in nature, right? That uh, and and we do not. I think we, we do we do understand what science says, and uh, so if you if you look into depression, there are different factors that causes depression. There can be an extraneous factor that is a, a factor from the outside, maybe the life certain life events that causes depression, or uh, there can be certain um, traumatic situations that causes depression, or there can also be um uh sorry i can't get the word there could also be internal factors of depression okay right? which means not really having a cause not really having an open cause that 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 uh, that also classifies as depression that's what we usually call as clinical depression now however these Depression definitely has roots in the way that one sees themselves, in the way that one feels about themselves, the one that they, uh, where they feel ab about uh, being victims. So these all have roots in in uh, um, in that you know the the way that they were seen as young uh, as children, or way they way they were uh, handled as young people, uh, definitely causes a sense of lack of self esteem, hopelessness, a rejection, uh, rejection. Uh, a lot of times, uh, it needn't rejection needn't only be um, from others. Rejection can also happen from within a person. You know the way the thought patterns, the wrong thinking of a person about themselves um, you know or making meaning into the way others treat them and rejecting themselves uh, or also becomes an issue so these are certain conditions for emotional well-being and there are there are very many more but these are some of the common ones that we we see okay uh, the next uh, we focus on to relational problems uh, problems that arise um, as a result of the way one relates to to another or how it manifests itself in relationships um, 
and some that have been written here are withdrawal anger being dominating controlling manipulative being violent being hurtful so a lot of relational problems come as a result of um, emotional concerns that one may have now let's let's take something for example as manipulative people become manipulative because um, there could be a notion that unless and until they get their way done through manipulation uh, it may never be possible for their inner needs to be met um uh so you know th thinking of a of a good example is how people manipulate others into a relationship with them either through lies or through deception by um by projecting somebody that they are not so that they get that attention and love and importance that they feel they wouldn't have if they didn't use uh manipulation as a as a as a card okay so manipulation becomes uh, so it has its root even in emotional problems anger anger is another that comes as a result of unmet uh needs within within them maybe of a, a a sense of not feeling important not feeling significant and the only way that they can uh show their power or their control is by the expression of an ang uh, expression of anger or the only way that they could uh, uh show their authority is by is by putting others um in in that position where they succumb because of the anger of the person withdrawal happens as a result of uh, uh, you know not not uh, being able to um probably discuss things with another the able the the ability to become vulnerable and come to a place of understanding so that's where uh, again withdrawal takes place so through all of these relational problems what we commonly see is that there is an underlying emotional struggle which affects the relationship as such okay there are certain life experiences that can cause emotional problems and uh, we see and there are there are two three written here but there are so many more um infidelity divorce deaths failures um multiple rejections maybe at work um uh, uh, improper relationships you know separations uh, abuse um be it be it uh, physical emotional sexual abuses all of that has a tendency to cause an emotional struggle so maybe some examples that i can bring up is let's say for uh, for those who've been abused uh there is a sense of a lack of uh, a sense of lack of self esteem a sense of um uh lack of trust uh, on on others uh the inability to uh, express emotions so as a result there is a lot of suppression that takes place um a sense of feeling victimized when abuse happens uh, a sense of not Uh, of wanting justice or it can be rebellion so the life experiences in itself can cause a lot of um, emotional emotional struggles okay for example infidelity or let's say divorce divorce definitely causes a, a sense of um, um a lack of who uh, a sense of responsibility of uh, so so generally when you, when you look at uh, young people or young children who who gone through um families who've had uh, uh divorce you 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 you'd hear young children say have i been responsible for what my parents did go through so they take that responsibility over themselves that it was because of them that uh, the divorce happened or it's because they were inadequate or they could have done something to uh, uh to to alter that uh, that experience right 
So life experiences in itself can cause emotional uh, issues. And lastly, physical health, where um, uh, physical, physical conditions in itself can cause um, significant emotional struggles, like, for example, um, um, deformities in, in the body, handicaps in the body can affect uh, the mind, can affect the soul, um, or any kind of physical health issues can cause the um, uh, can cause difficulty. So uh, I, I think I'd, I just want to bring up one, maybe one more example here, which which was which is something that I read. Um, it talks about autoimmune disorders. So autoimmune disorders are those disorders that cause, um, you know, the, the the very defense cells that we all have that fights illnesses, uh, which come from outside those defense cells tend to see uh, their own cells as foreign. OK? Sorry, please give me a minute. I need to cough. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So the. Um, Autoimmune disorders are those where the uh, specific defense cells of the individual attacks the healthy cells of the of, of that individual. So you uh, the the cells do not recognize the body cells as um, uh, as its own. It's it uh, detects this as foreign. And that's what that's what an autoimmune disorder di disorder is. It begins the immune system fights itself. That's what an autoimmune disorder is. And um, there was this interesting book that uh, that spoke about how emotional disturbances often have a causal factor in autoimmune disorders. Like for example, those who have um, uh, 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 a poor sense of self-esteem tends to uh, belittle themselves or tends to keep um, bringing themselves down over and over again. And uh, you know, with that kind of a pattern that the mind follows, it becomes one with the body. The body also begins to follow suit in what it's doing. So a lot of health conditions uh, also do have its uh, um, uh, do have its roots in emotional struggles. Okay, so that's that's to do with the physical uh, physical health. And uh, you know there are uh, in 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 the book it talks about sc certain scriptures where it says um, a broken spirit dries the bones. So whenever the emotional or the soul part of you is compromised it does show its effect on, on the body. And <clears throat> I'm sure that even you all in your experience have seen how when you are emotionally down, um, there, is, there seems to be no physical strength. There is no ability to function physically. Uh, you're not able to concentrate, not able to work. Um, a, a, a strong emotional issue can bring one down physically as well. So these are some of the conditions. Um, you know, it, it's not all comprehensive, but then we've spoken about about a few here. Um, I think I think just looking up certain questions. I think uh, Kennedy asked, where does autism fall into? OK, so autism um, is a developmental disorder, is a developmental disorder, something that comes as a result of um, a delay in development in some areas of an individual's life. Uh, I, so uh, so specifically, the, the hallmark of autism is a lack of socialization, inability to socialize with one another, with, with others, a lack of emotional 
involvement or expressions as a sense of emotional detachment that is there and the third hallmark is certain repetitive behaviors uh, it's shown autism is generally shown to have some sense of a developmental issue it is a developmental issue than it being an emotional issue however someone with autism can have emotional um, uh, concerns um, a lot of people children people with autism are are seen to be intellectually very um, uh, you know very strong either in in some form of a uh, intellectual skill there's a lot of uh, a lot of strength in it but it's in the emotional and the social part that they have not reached the skill or the ability that should have come by okay and it is in at least in psychiatry it's seen as a developmental uh, disorder <clears throat> okay yes thank you rose yes it's intrinsic yes absolutely extraneous and intrinsic thank you yeah so is there any any question anything that um, either in the form of a sharing or in the form of a thought or in the form uh, anything yes yes samuel please go ahead um, thank you, Pastor. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so, Pastor, um, I was wondering, so, um, say, um, especially for inner wholeness, um, a lot of um, the diseases, uh, the brokenness that we see, uh, um, if it's, uh, say, um, a complex or rage or um, I'm considering a lot of these would have stemmed at an early childhood age. Um, a lot of it might have to do with how a child was uh, you know, brought up, what the child experienced while growing up, what the child was exposed to. Um, and... Uh, so my, my thought is, like, let's say, um, you know, because of something happens to a child, I and mean, we live in a fallen world and not everything's perfect, uh, and uh, if something happens to a child in his early age, which causes certain behavior traits, whether it's an obsessive compulsive disorder or something, and, and this person struggles through it, you know, let's say, you know, for example, say it could be a believer itself, accepts you know Christ at a young age. But but these uh, this thing, the the disease, the brokenness inside is is so prominent, and it's a part of his or her character. Person struggles, and only at a much later stage, uh, this you know realizes. Through, through the proper teaching and guidance realizes that it, it has already been healed and then you know slowly through right counseling through uh, through a lot of things finally recovers but then um, but then during that period you know all the damage that has already been done all the relationships that uh, has been broken all the tears all the so uh, I mean in one sense it doesn't seem fair but again life's not fair but but um, my question is around you know like because of something that happens to a child in in, in a very young age uh, and 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 all the damage that it does to a person uh, but then eventually come to a point to realize that uh, it could have all been avoided uh, the healing could have come, the inner healing could have come at a much younger age. Uh, so uh, is like, how, how does, how do we, uh, of like, how do we get to that? How do we avoid, like, let's say, probably a part of it is the church's responsibility. Part of it is responsibility of um, elders, um, pastors, but, but again, at the same time, you know, recognizing, um, the importance of, I think, protecting our young ones, but at, at the same time, recognizing uh, 
what damages have been done to young people and working towards it proactively. I think, you know, just waiting for, instead of waiting for a person to realize that I have an inferiority complex because of um, what happened to my parents when I was four or five years old, or I have, uh, you know, I have... Um, a compulsive disorder because uh, you know uh, when I was growing up this was the environment that I grew up in uh, you know later on the person realizing and then looking for help um, is there a proactive way uh, due to which a lot of damage that happens to a lot of people's lives where and and for some it's like too late you know it's only when we like the person's already committed suicide and we realize that uh, because of the history or past like this person became the person he was so so i don't know if they're all like are, are, are there individuals organizing like I'm, I'm just thinking you know very broad context of how can a lot of this be avoided like treatment is one but um avoding preventive, or, or, you're saying yeah. preventive techniques preventive right? and, and even <laughs> early recognition early recognition mm. and proactive uh, working towards these um, instead of uh, you know a, a late uh, recognition so I, I think just mm. struggling with these thoughts okay yeah great i think that's that's a um great question <clears throat> however I, I don't know how much we uh, how much i can uh, uh justly answer that but nevertheless i think some of the things that uh, we need to probably do is um making people aware of the of this part of people's lives the the soul part of their lives the emotional part of their lives and especially in our culture, I think I'll speak for us as the Indian culture, maybe um, a lot more way down south, is, um, you know, and I, I don't know how much, how many of you all uh, feel the same way, you're not encouraged to discuss emotions, you're not encouraged to talk about what you may be going through or or, or allowed display of some of these emotions. So, um, you know, I remember as a child, whenever, uh, you know, I felt a sense of anger or hurt, or I just wanted to cry, um, I was asked to stop. I was asked to not cry, not emote, or even not talk about it. All right. So what happens is over time, there is a suppression of, very many emotions that take place and that gets built up largely and gets manifested in in uh, wrong patterns gets manifested in in wrong ways of expressions so and something that i do see now uh, at least because there's so much of awareness about mental health uh, and and there is so much of awareness about uh, thoughts and feelings and emotions. Um, there is the people are being more open about it. People are being uh, at least knowing that you know this is something that cannot be stuck in or uh, shouldn't should not have uh, expression to. So, as in the sense of uh, I, I'd say prevention. This is one is to just as much as you see the physical development or the intellectual or academic development or the spiritual development of an individual, you also need to look at the emotional development of a young person or as a young child. Because this is what, if you look at um, us as a whole, there are different compartments of us. There is, uh, like I was saying, there is the physical part, there is the emotional, there is the intellectual, there is the spiritual, there is the social part of us. All of this makes an individual what they are. So I think first and foremost, the most important thing to do is build that awareness that the emotional, the inner person side of you is as valid a person just as much as it is a physical and for those of us who are believers also a spiritual. So that's one. Early recognition, one way is for more awareness to be built as to 
how um, emotional conditions can can definitely affect uh, the the individual's life, individual's future, individual's uh, purpose uh, and, and struggle. So, uh, and and this I think begins number one at home, where uh, you know where parents need to. Um, um, so often, what we tend to do is uh, so I'm, I'm just uh, you know there's a book that's called a shepherding a child's heart if any of you are interested please buy that book and read it it's an excellent book it talks about how the behaviors of a child is what is usually focused on but not the heart behind the behavior so uh, often we tend to put a bandage on the behavior, tend to reduce a behavior, reinforce a behavior, but we do not look at the heart of the behavior. So I think one, the first and foremost place is for parents to be able to work with their children in order to look at the heart of a matter or heart of a behavior or heart of a thought or heart of an intention and what lies within that and and able and uh, work with the child to be able to process that so that you know that becomes more pure and more acceptable and out of the you know out of the wellspring of the heart that's what scripture talks about so out of the purity of the heart is what the behavior comes in so these are the i think the two ways that i just like to uh, just share. I'm, I'm sure look at something more. Hey, hey, hey. It's, it's helping me. Yeah, thank you. I mean, while you're talking, I just realized uh, a lot of our schools also is geared towards uh, the intellectual and the physical and the physical um, development of a child. But there isn't much uh, proactive uh, steps taken towards the development of an emotional and, and the spiritual uh, health and well-being um, of a child. So probably, right. yeah, I guess you mentioned, you know, parents realizing this and, um, and equipping themselves to... Uh, to handle uh, emotional and spiritual development of children, and and even I think spiritual, you know, like uh, for a lot of believers, uh, they have they may have some idea of uh, shepherding spiritual health. You know, um, Sunday schools and churches do a lot, but I think the emotional development could be a bit tricky. I'm not sure. Uh, how well people are equipped uh, to mm. you know, to handle the emotional development of young know, children. I, I'll definitely read the book um, Shepherd in a Child's Heart. Uh, it's a good yeah. Thank you. It's by Ted Tripp. T E D E T R I P. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I think Christopher and Shay. Christopher, you have a question. Or oh, Shay, one of your. Yes, uh, uh, Pastor. Um, I think this is related to, to Sam's uh, question, um, uh, maybe in a, in a really different, uh, really different, different sort of uh, approach. Um, uh, this is really about um, uh, children uh, who may have been impacted by uh, by some kind of a trauma or some kind of a yeah, incident yeah. which has um, mm -hmm. uh, which has uh, you know which can impact, which can impact them um, but they're not aware that um, that this that this event has um, has taken place or um, maybe there is a defense mechanism which has uh, has happened and you know that that um, uh, event has been uh, in a sense, uh, forgotten, and um, um, it w it wouldn't really come out, or you know, in a, in a normal therapy session, it just sort of is, you know, within that person, uh, you know, being, you know, I mean, there is it, they live with it basically, and then it, you know, it can just sort of erupt um, uh, uncontrollably in, in different forms. So, I guess my question is about. Um, uh, how would one treat this um, this kind of um, this kind of a uh, you know uh, situation? Um, um, you know, there've been uh, you know sometimes you 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 know you we hear about you know uh, people go through some kind of a uh, hypnosis uh, uh, 
therapy, you know, where they, where they, uh, they, they actually sort of, you know, uh, go through a session and this, this trauma, uh, traumatic uh, incident or this traumatic phase in their life, which could have happened even, you know, during, you know, infancy or, you know, when they're, when they're, uh, you know, a, a baby. Um, that incident then gets, you know, revealed. So just want to just get your thoughts on that. Can you hear you, ma? I think you're mute. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, um, I, uh, like I said, I'd like to um, discuss this in two levels. One is for a believer, or uh, and maybe an unbeliever. So, the, when there are significant traumas that have happened, uh, especially in childhood, uh, either um, uh, being too young to remember or as a defense mechanism has absolutely no memory of it and that can happen even even in an adult absolutely having no memory of it because of the shock and the trauma that it has brought um, uh, we know that the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals deep truths uh, of, of us so um, I know of people who've been through inner healing uh, sessions where things of their past which they were not consciously aware of has been revealed to them either through a prophetic word or through a personal revelation that is there and uh, that in itself uh, has brought them to a place of freedom so i think that is highly recommended for every one of us to go to uh, go through a place of uh, inner healing and uh, um, you know, just just to come to a place of uh, uh, having the spirit reveal things to us that may not be consciously that that we may be consciously aware of, or that we subconsciously have suppressed because of the pain and the struggles it brought. So, um, as as a believer, uh, I believe that is possible. You know, the more that we um, submit to to the working of the Holy Spirit, the more that can be revealed and that brings about healing. Like we read in scripture, God wants us to be whole and holy in every area of our lives. And he is desirous to do that when, those who, when, when we seek and ask him. Looking at it from people who do not know God, um, uh, there, there again, uh, uh, you know, so let's say someone who's not at all conscious about what uh, what has been the trauma that happens to them. But the manifestations of that trauma will be very, very evident. Okay? And uh, that happens... Uh, so manifestations being, you know, either issues in the relationship, um, issues in the way that they, they conduct themselves, uh, in the way that they, um, their ex they have experiences emotionally, definitely will take them to a place of actually seeking and finding out. And uh, uh, so in that way, yes, counseling and therapy is very useful, uh, where with the permission of the individual, they are allowed and uh, they, you know, they look back uh, into into finding out what have been some of the contributions that has caused them there. Maybe there there's certain limits to that because probably psychology may not really deeply dig out that which is forgotten or entrenched or maybe as a child, you know, as a baby, like you said, as, as something that's happened as a baby or as an infant. Um, but nevertheless, there are there are certain things that that uh, that will be revealed. Like I have an example of a of a of a lady uh, who told me that you know she doesn't remember completely, but that she felt and she thought she was abused by her father, a uh, sexually abused by her father when she was two or three years old. Uh, so there have been manifestations 
of uh, that uh, that that struggle in her current relationship so that's how that information actually came about so as uh, you know she was talking and she was exploring this was something that she brought up and she said this is not something that i i have ever spoken of or i ever thought of but it just came to me i i just remember very vaguely these things that have happened so I believe that you know, as as an individual is helped to explore, um, some things may be revealed, and you use what you have, or you use what the person is able to bring out, and help them to come to a place of healing. Uh, sometimes, you know, things may be so painful that it is it may be better forgotten. Uh, these are all for unbelievers. May may be better forgotten than to actually be brought up because um, there was. I remember another client who uh, who she wasn't aware that she was abused, <clears throat> but uh, but you know one of uh, her family members had told her that she was abused as a child, and that in itself, just the revelation of that entire trauma in itself took her to a very um, different emotional state, and it took. Uh, um, very, very much to help her to come to terms with one of that. So uh, as a believer, when the Holy Spirit convicts or when the Holy Spirit reveals, he's also bringing in his healing touch. He's also providing healing just as much as an awareness. And uh, that, I think, is the safest place to do it in, knowing that um, uh, whatever struggles that come as a result of some of those situations, there is power to heal. There is power to to be delivered from. Yeah, I think I'll I'll leave that answer to that. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think we'll close. It's um, uh, eleven, almost going to be eleven fifty-eight. Uh, may I uh, request anyone to please close in prayer? Any any student to please close in prayer? Rupa, can I? Uh, yes, Avni, go ahead. Avni, go ahead. Avni. You can pray. Please go ahead. Okay, man. Uh, thank you. Father God, we just want to thank you, Father. Hearts are full of gratitude towards you, Father, for you're so sensitive towards every part of our being, Father. You have, Lord, made this way for us to be well-equipped to learn the things that we would never learn outside, Father, but you made it possible for us to come together in your presence as we sit and learn, Father. May this teaching, may this learning be a great help, Lord Father, to bring healing to the world, to bring healing to ourselves, to bring healing to the people around us, Father, and be a blessing, Lord Father, in the way you want us to bless others, Father. Lead us by your Holy Spirit, and equip us well, Father, and Lord Father, teach us what we need to learn, Father. We are open to you, Father. We invite you to come and do the work that you want to do. We thank you for ma'am. We ask you to continue to bless her, continue to fill her, continue to lead her, Father, and uh, help her to be a blessing to many, many, many more generations. We once again thank you for who you are and how you're leading us. We thank you once again for this platform. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And ask this prayer in the precious and matchless name of Lord our Savior. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Avni. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you, we'll meet. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll meet next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.